As Burgoyne begins to approach more populated areas, he too makes an appeal to the inhabitants. This crusade is to restore to you the blessings of legal government. You Americans are invited to join us in this glorious task. Civilians will not be bothered if you remain quietly in your homes and make available to our army forage for our animals. Burgoyne's words have the opposite effect. Burgoyne talked too much and wrote too much. I mean, it was a very high-profile invasion that he conducted thanks to his own style of conducting it and, in fact, helped to solidify American motivation to resist him. For nearby farmers and townspeople, the advancing British army has suddenly become very real. The Americans start to assemble into their militia units. The Englishman, Nicholas Cresswell, is finding his travel plans disrupted. New recruits are collecting in every town on the continent. In a few months, the rascals will be stronger than ever. Even the preachers have turned their pulpits into drums, summoning all to arms among this cursed rabble. Damn them all! Burgoyne is beginning to encounter scattered opposition. He issues a more ominous proclamation. To those who continue this stubborn rebellion will come the vengeance of a state against its willful outcasts. The Indian forces, under my direction, will wreak devastation, famine, and every imaginable horror on those who resist us. Even though Indians and colonists often got along trading with one another and forming alliances, most colonial Americans were terrified of the native peoples who were at their borders. These Indians were very effective warriors. They could strike over long distances, suddenly, swiftly, and then disappear again into the forest and head home. As these stories de developed over time, they became embellished, they became exaggerated, and they achieved a currency in colonial America that made Indians very feared warriors indeed. General Burgoyne, knowing this fear, used it as a weapon of terror and publicized his Indian allies in northern New York. But Burgoyne's strategy backfires. In late July, a young woman, Jane McCrae, engaged to a British officer, is brutally murdered. No one will ever know for certain how Jane McCrae was killed and by whom. But the Americans knew from the very first news of this killing how they would use it. They would use it to great effect against the British by playing upon people's fears of these Indian warriors. The murder of Jane McCrae is retold and embellished in melodramatic paintings and exaggerated newspaper accounts. The story spreads throughout New England. The Americans, who were masters of propaganda, said, here is a woman, a beautiful woman, who was a fiancé of one of the officers with Burgoyne. And Burgoyne's Indians scalped her. Now, if this is what's being done to the women who are allied with his own forces, what are they going to do with your wives and your children when they get here and they're coming? And the New England troops just turned out in droves.